Council is webcasting this meeting, so members who want to speak freely into the microphones when you're talking and don't uh, appear to have it on, of course, sidebar discussions with the, using the microphones. Uh, and and uh, people in the, people in the, uh, order in, in the pub of the members of the public, their cameras will not be on you unless you're coming up to the table to, to uh, speak. Thank you. So I'll ask for any apologies. We have councillors Lee, Webster and Quacks. Are there any other apologies? And Councillor Clow for absence. Councillor Clow for absence. The Mayor. And apologies for lateness from Councillor Penrose and Sir John Walker. Okay. Mm. Also leaving early, Chair, I've got council business at uh, half past 11. Thank you. So I'll move the apologies be received. Second. Seconded by Councillor Cooper. I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Aye. 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 Against, declare that carried. Um, we now move to... Any declarations of interest? Yes, Mr Chairman, um, item 9, District Licensing Committee review as a member of a licensing trust with a, conf a conflict. Thank you. So you'll step I'll down. I'll remove or? myself from the room. Thank you. Um, we now go to confirmation of minutes, item 3. I'll move that the minutes of the Regional Strategy and Policy Committee uh, on Wednesday the 13th of May this year confirmed as a true and correct record. Seconded by Councillor Casey. I'll put that motion. Those Aye. in favour? Aye. 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 Against, declare that carried. No petitions. There's public input, item five. And we have Mr Roger Bryant from Waiheke Island has come over to address us in relation to the issue of um, empowering communities. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Bryant. As I said, you've got five minutes. And Right. And we then we'll have any questions. Thank you. And there are, Mr. Bryant has given us a, some handouts and they've been uh, distributed onto your table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and also, I thank you for your prompt response uh, to my request to make this presentation at this meeting today. Um, I have two pieces of paper which have been sent around to you, which uh, set out a lot of the things. Um, this has been a rather rushed thing, and um, as I say consultation, as defined by the council, has been a problem for many years. And in particular, during the, the where I started off with a lot of this was on the Heraki Gulf section of the Crows District Plan. Uh, by the time this is settled, it'll probably be uh, due for its next review in uh, 2016, if things go right. Um, my interests lie in community development, and I was a member of the Auckland Community Development Alliance, and also through the Flax Roots program of uh, uh, North Shore uh, Council, uh, Community and Social Services, now known as ANCAD. And I've been following the Thriving Communities progress for, for some time uh, through all these things. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be at an ANCAD meeting uh, when the, uh, the, this question first came up. Um, we couldn't find anything from the background who was doing the consultation, and I've tried different ways since then, been going through the local board and everything else like that. It has been very difficult to find out what has been happening on this issue. Um, now, attachment B of the summary of the feedback and the officers it, it is, um, well, it should be taken as their conclusions, uh, as far as I'm concerned, rather than the residents, because you know, the, the people around the place, the residents and ratepayers, haven't had a chance to talk on much of this at all. The report before the board today does nothing to alleviate my concerns about the empowered communities approach next steps, but confirms my original crit criticisms that this is just another plan for the bureaucracy to make work for itself by developing an approach on how to do it rather than looking at the intentions and aspirations which our community needs and wants, or our community needs and wants. If a core ingredient of community empowerment is clear communication and effective community engagement, then the way in which this matter has been foisted on those it is supposed to benefit shows no willingness to share power and resources, in my humble opinion. Um, the lines of communication are really one of the most important things around it, and there are no lines of communication within the Auckland Council that we can find out. There's nothing between the, the government and the council itself do not seem to be working together. Uh, stuff does not filter down through to the uh, uh, local boards and doesn't come back up through the local boards. Uh, council decisions, well, I find more of them notified on press releases, on scoop, 
uh, released through the Public Relations Department. Uh, local board meetings workshops uh, are meetings between the board's members and council officers to the exclusion of members of the community or affected members of the community. Uh, th th this sort of uh, cuts out everybody getting together at one time and being able to talk together to sort the thing out. And uh, I just wanted to say that also missing out, if you go back, is the role of the volunteer. It's, it's missing completely <coughs> in this, and th this will obviously miss out through these things. And the role of the volunteer is well described in an article on volunteering in The Guardian on Monday, June the 1st, and should be a prime consider consideration as a community asset. Um, there cannot be any good decision making, and <coughs> the council and the, and the previous Auckland City Council uh, we're all on about good decisions. You can't make a good decision unless you have all the facts in front of you. <coughs> Public consultation and the People's Panel are contracted out to Ubiquity Engage, which is a, a firm whose reports seem to conform with what the Council wants to hear. Local boards were provided with summaries of the recent uh, draft um, budget, uh, but were denied the written submissions. Uh, as I say, uh, just to come to an end, coming to, from one of the smaller, poorly resourced and marginalised communities, I'm still concerned about the short time frame to implement a new community development and safety model, which is also concerned for some of the other people uh, who made, uh, who, the few people who did make any submissions towards it, along with the need to take time to develop trust and strong relationships before communities can deliver more. Our position in the Hierarchy Gulf has been marginalised by urban considerations and the environmental problems minimalised by this council's plans, policies and strategies reports rather than action. In other words, nobody out in the Gulf has got, a, has got a say in much of this at all, and it's been left out, and it is still, as far as I'm concerned, the crown in the Gulf, <coughs> the crown of Auckland. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Bryant. Are there any questions, Mr Bryant, please? Thank you. Can I please the people? Thank you, Mr Bryant. Um, my question is, um, I mean, the local boards have been heavily involved. Quite a lot of the chairs have been involved in developing this process. So you're saying you're not hearing much back through well, the local board? I have or? taken this matter to the local board. I'm here with their blessing today because I, one of the papers is what I said to the local board the other day, and I've made several presentations to them, and I'm there. Uh, they, um, they seem to be uh, trapped in the thing down there, and... I just want to say that really what you've got there is that the local boards have got stuff which they receive. There has not been the feedback through the local boards or anything else like that. And I think that the local boards, you know, I, as I say, I think the whole thing is just, you know, just a complete lack of communication all the way around. And as I say, I am here with the blessing of the, the, the Waikiki local board. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Councillor Cashmore. Yes, thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Bryan, I'd be interested to hear from you about how you think it should <coughs> or could be done better given the position we're at now. Last night I was in a rural community called Waiuku in the far south of the region where they are embracing the Powered Communities model and I'm really 100% in favour of it because they are doing so much good work in their community that they think this is a way of getting council out of their way and to let them carry on. That, that's sort of been proven there with the uh, mudlarks removing mangroves, for instance. So how do you think it could be working better for us, given the time frames we're in now? Well, uh, I agree that th there is a difference here between the people on the outside and uh, I know through the going through thriving communities. I think that where things started off from uh, with, with the Auckland Community Development Alliance, and it was unfortunate that fell through, and uh, th there's, you know, the things there. But I really think that there has been such a lack of sort of working together, things coming through, Things don't come through, and as I said before, it's um, the local board, our local board works with the council officers and doesn't work with the people who are affected by it. If they'd worked through in that way, things would have been a lot different. So, but you, for various reasons, so you say it's an issue between your local board and your community rather than the council per se in your community? In to, in, well, it, 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 it's sort of, it's, it's all in the feedback down the line. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Mr. Bryant, I thank you for coming over and Waikiki this morning and uh, putting your views forward on this subject. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll move that we thank Mr. Mr. Roger Bryant for um, his attendance.
Second that. Seconded by Councillor Cashmore. I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Aye. 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 Against, declare that carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Byron. you very much. Thank you. So um, we, we go to have public input, local board input. I think that input will be when we have the particular items that we'll be applying to. Uh, extraordinary business, no items of extraordinary business. Item eight, notices of motion, no notices of motion. We come to item nine, uh, district licensing committee review. Now we have um, we have two board members, well, we'll have an officer presentation, but we do have the boards, Otara Papatawi and Mangari Odahu. Have they wanted to present? If you wish, but well, if you come forward now, the two board representatives. Uh, oh, they can do this separately. If you come forward and make your presentation, then we'll call up the officers. Thank you. So we have Patricio Collins, the chair of the Otara Papatari Local Board, and Mr. Mick Bakulich, who's represented a member of the local of the Mangari Otahu Local Board. We thank you for both attending this morning. Welcome. Uh, Flava, Mr Chair and to councillors, thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, to you on this matter. We wanted, we've got a um, one slide PowerPoint for you to, uh, to look at and remember, <coughs> and, yeah, and if we'll, we'll uh, give you a Samoan version of five minutes with your uh, <laughs> latitude Mr Chair. Uh, we, were, we just wanted to, to express what we understood as being the purpose of the legislation uh, or the change of uh, the legislation, which was the objective of the sale, supply and use undertaken safely and responsibly to reduce the harm of uh, off licences and their provision of service in our communities especially. Uh, our view is that the purpose of the legislation hasn't been met uh, under the DLCs in that uh, as local boards we're not satisfied with the decisions have come back and to the extent that they've included both local board input up until a point uh, where we had to uh, contract our own legal support for a while whilst council was arguing amongst itself as to whether it would provide legal support for local boards. Uh, so we undertook uh, the process of getting our own support in so that we could in fact uh, voice the concerns of our communities uh, which was to see their objections raised. I think the other point that um, I'd like to cover is that hearings for the community, we undertook a process where we were in touch with uh, both the communities of uh, our areas which had been part of the DLC hearings as well as those who hadn't been. And many um, came back with the idea that they find the process uh, intimidating. They're coming into a room that is painted uh, nice plain white uh, and they're sitting some distance from commissioners or from panel members, which makes it an intimidating place. Now, you know that uh, close to 90% of the objections came from uh, South Auckland and boards in the South Auckland region, so they were mostly from uh, people in our community. And what we'd like to see is the environment created such that people feel like they can, in fact, participate in it, even though it's quite an intimidating environment for them to be a part of. And Member Bakalich will pick up on some of those concerns when he um, addresses the his points. And finally, the point I'd like to raise is that the DLC panels from our uh, engagement with the community, there was a clear sense from them that they weren't reflecting, uh, the panel members weren't reflecting the community, that there weren't people who had uh, a local awareness, a local appreciation and acknowledgement of the challenges uh, that are faced in those communities. And the last point I just did want to add was uh, the injurisprudence, uh, I wanted to come back to the note of the law, injurisprudence, Professor Sandell of Harvard University talks about the realist approach to jurisprudence, which is the science of the application of the law, which talks about, looks carefully at the protection of the vulnerable and marginalised groups in society who don't feel they can participate or have a voice. That is our clear concern because we do not believe that the DLCs have heard or understood the voices of our communities. Uh, Mr Chair, uh, councillors, the Mangari Otahu Local Board, uh, so we've got the three bullet points up there uh, that which I will speak to. Um, I myself have personally, like other local board members from our ward, 
uh, have uh, spoken at these hearings, and what I'm about to say is obviously what we've experienced and also those from our community. Uh, firstly, the DLCs, we believe, uh, need to improve their practice. There is an inconsistency between the LC, L, uh, DLC, uh, DLC panels and the approaches to hearings, uh, decision-making and the knowledge of local area and alcohol-related issues. What may help is an independent practitioner uh, should be able to ask to review all DLC decisions and recommend how to improve uh, consistency. Uh, DLCs to improve their communication. Uh, Mr Chair, the DLC cross-examination questions should not be in an unthreatening tone, in clear language and limiting jargon so community members can understand. So we have a scenario at the moment where people from the community who are objectors uh, are lay people, uh, not lawyers, um, who have never been before uh, a hearing situation, which is almost like a court, uh, and expected to, um, to be up with the play in terms of uh, legal, legal jargon and legal talk. Uh, we find it very frustrating that community members, uh, when they uh, present uh, evidence, that, that ev a lot of that evidence in regards to social harm is taken as hearsay, uh, regardless of what health statistics say, regardless of what the professionals are saying in terms of how that really impacts, you know, the, the number of alcohol uh, outlets in our community really impact our communities uh, negatively. Uh, and thirdly, D DLCs to be more neutral. Uh, the perception that DLCs <coughs> consider community voices less than applicants. More information should be provided to inform the public of how to object and what to object about. This could be achieved through an improved council website. Uh, Mr Chair, uh, when you sit in these hearings, it, it's almost as if um, the minds of the DLCs are already loaded towards the applicant. Uh, we as the community and objectors are asked to prove, again, how is another liquor store in our community going to harm uh, the people. Um, again, statistically, if you look at young people, unemployment, especially in areas like ours, you know, alcohol is not helpful. And especially if there's price wars going on, it's, uh, it's pr promoted as you know, trendy and sexy because of the, the colours, the costs. Um, you know, it's just, it's, this process is flawed. And unfortunately, in a community like ours, we're in the past where they've handed out uh, renewals and new uh, licenses for new premises. Um, it has just, it's like a disease. Look, I've got no other fancy words to say it. But this current DLC, even though it's great, we have an opportunity as a community to object. But the process itself is so loaded towards the applicant that we as a community, we, we feel very disempowered. And given that we're going towards the you know, this new theme of empowering communities, uh, we're far from it in, in regards to this particular process.